And a welcome Winthrop to the Winthrop Town Council meeting of November 10th, 2020. It's being held at 7 p.m. It's being held remotely. The meeting will be recorded and shown live on WCAT, and it will probably be shown again uh, multiple times during the next week. The call in number for tonight's meeting, uh, which you're going to need for public comment and public hearings is 1646-558-8656. Once you call in, the ID number to use is 819-737-12963. I'll repeat those again uh, just before the public hearing and public comment. And I would like to call the meeting to order. And could we please have a roll call? Councilor Ruggiero. Here. Councilor Flockett. Councilor DeMarco. Here. Councilor Christopher. Yeah. Councilor Honan. Here. Councilor Conti. Councilor Frino. Unmute yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Vice President Letary. Yeah. President Boncori. Here. And Councilor Flockhart was on. Uh, she's on. Yeah, the- she was. Yeah, she is here. Yep. Thank you. As as is as is uh, Councilor Laconte. He said here, yes. but he was muted. Yeah, I, I could see him. <laughs> okay. <He's> present. <laughs> I, I'm going to call on Councilor Ruggiero to please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. You could put up the flag, Lisa. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, moving on, could we please have a motion to approve the minutes of our October 20th, 2020 meeting? Motion to approve. Second. Is there a second? Second. By Councilor Letary, seconded by Councilor Farino. Are there any amendments? Are there any additions? Are there any deletions? Hearing none, all those in, figna- in favor, please signify by saying aye when your name is called. Councilor Ruggiero. Yes. Councilor Flockhart. Yes. Councilor DeMarco. Yes. Councilor Christopher. Yes. Councilor Honan. Aye. Councilor Conti. Yes. Councilor Farino? Yes. Vice President Letary? Yes. President Boncori? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Under general information and recommendations, uh, we have a little bit to talk about, and uh, you're going to hear more from uh, our health officer, Meredith Hurley, uh, shortly under the town manager's report. But with the government changing the metric as to uh, decide how uh, our towns are, are located in the red, yellow, or, or green uh, symbolism for what they can do and what they can't do under the emergency orders. Uh, the, the change became quite large uh, last week. And uh, after we were 12 weeks in the red and hovering about uh, at eight or nine people per week, uh, we jumped up over this past weekend, they're having 45 cases over the weekend. But with the new metric that was installed, even though we are at 55, we are in the yellow. So we are now finally a yellow community after 12 weeks of being uh, stuck in the in the red. So uh, even though our cases really went up quite a bit, our status has changed and we're now in the yellow. But if you look at uh, the numbers that we were we were doing on a weekly basis, we were 
anything in the 8, 9, uh, 9, 5, 11. Then uh, the week before last, we went up to 36. And now we went up to 55. But the 55 put us into a yellow with the new metric that the government came up with. But even though the government came up with this new metric and has uh, determined that the governor has put out many new uh, orders because of the increase throughout the entire state of COVID cases. I, uh, it's my understanding that as of November 1st, the hospitals in Massachusetts were at, Massachusetts are at a 67% capacity with COVID cases. And they went from uh, getting a, a, like 300 a, a, a day to 1,100 a day. So the governor has put out special directives with COVID order numbers uh, 54, 55 in the past week. Uh, order 54 talks a great deal about social distancing, and saying that you must maintain six feet away from other persons, no matter where you are, uh, except in the same household. They've changed the number of people that can be at gatherings and uh, indoor gatherings at private res residences and other places not falling in the definition of an event venue uh, is limited to a maximum of 10 people. And that's not such great news for Thanksgiving, but the only way the governor thinks that this is going to uh, slow the pace of COVID is if we follow these orders. And the order for inside gatherings is 10 people. And the order for outside gatherings at private residence or other places that are not an event venue are 25 persons. Uh, so please uh, try to cohere to the governor's orders because uh, I believe that the town is adopting the governor's orders. So uh, our Board of Health uh, and our administration will be following the governor's orders. Order number 55 has uh, defined that all persons in Massachusetts over the age of five are required to wear a, ma a mask or cloth face covering over their mouth and nose when in public locations, whether indoors or outdoors. Mask uh, face coverings are encouraged but not required for children between the ages of two to five. But they are required for anyone over five, whether you're indoors or outdoors in public places. These are orders of the governor and uh, I believe our Board of Health is uh, agreeing with those orders as well as our administration. So please try to abide by those orders and let's see if we can get our numbers down in Winthrop and in the state of Massachusetts, hopefully in the country because um, it's getting worse instead of better right now. Council President? Yes. Um, so there's actually uh, executive order 53 was one that you didn't hit on. That came yeah, out as well. Thinking, oh, just before four and five, yeah. Um, so yeah, the executive order is the uh, 53 is the 9.30 p.m. to 5 a.m. Yeah. And then there's um, the stay at home advisory ties into that as well. Yeah, 53 says you gotta stay home from 10 p.m. till 5 p.m. and then 5 a.m. Uh, there also is a 9:30 uh, closing of all restaurants and uh, establishments that serve uh, alcohol. Uh, they can uh, stay open for takeout and delivery, but uh, everyone has to be out of any restaurant or liquor serving establishment by 10 p.m. They need to stop serving alcohol at 9.30. These are uh, all orders that have come out in the past week. Uh, as I said, I think the COVID order number 53, 54, and 55. So I think that covers all of them. Austin, did you, did you left any out? Uh, nope, you, you hit them. And uh, the stay-at-home advisory isn't an executive order. Um, it's more of a encouragement. Um, and there are some activities, you know, you're getting groceries, you're getting takeout food, you need emergency medical attention. Those are okay reasons to be out. Um, not necessarily 
go and hang with your friends or something like that. So um, they're, they're trying as much as possible to encourage people to kind of do the right thing. Moving on, uh, I'm going to open a public hearing and the public hearing is on the town council's transfer of $25,000 for the dog park funding. And again, now the number to call in for this public hearing and for public comment is one 8656 with an ID number of 819-737-12963. I will now open the public hearing. Does anyone want to be heard, Councilor Terry? Thank you, Council President. Um, we did have a finance committee meeting this evening and discussed this item also. The general premise here is that we have been for several years looking to build a dog park for the community. We have looked at numerous sites um, and we kind of finally, after years, have settled down on one site on Veterans Road. Um, the cost of this dog park will be approximately $125,000. We were hoping to have funds available from Miller Field Project that we would be able to use for this project. However, um, that does not look like it's the case. Um, I thank the town manager for thinking a little out of the box and for um, trying to get a grant from the Winthrop Foundation. Um, I attended a meeting with the Winthrop Foundation and they were very supportive of the idea. Um, they have their own restraints right now with COVID and everything else, and they're very um, careful about how they spend their money, but they, they really do think this is a worthy project. Um, <clears throat> after some discussion, it was decided that they would be willing to do an 80% match if we were, as the town, able to match 20%. So they are willing to... Um, give the town a grant of $100,000 if we are able to come up with this $25,000. I thought that that was very incredibly generous of them and I thank them for their time and effort in listening to the town. Um, we are hopeful that this is a project that can get done sooner rather than later. Um, so that is basically what is going on here. So this would be our match of a, um, a grant along with the Winter Foundation to be able to build a long overdue dog park for this town. I often think and, and mention uh, Council McDuffie, who this was a pet project of him also. And I think of him often, and especially when we're discussing this and um, really hope we can do this for him also. I agree. Uh, does any public want to be heard? Is there anyone in the public uh, trying to raise a hand to be heard in public hearing? Denise, do we have anyone? Oh, Larissa? No, I don't see oh, any. No one's there. raising a hand. Okay. Any other councils want to be heard on this? Hearing none, I will close the public hearing and we will discuss this under uh, old business. Okay. Moving on, we'll now open it to public comment. Have uh, Astrid, Astrid Waynes. Okay. Hello, this is Astrid Waynes from the Board of Health. I don't know Hi, if you guys Astrid. can hear me all. How are you? Hey, we can hear you, Astrid. Great. Um, I just wanted to call in and just... Um, I tell you that all members of the Board of Health share the grave concern about the recent increase in COVID cases in our town. Um, we are very concerned. Um, we now have a, a per last week's health report by the Department of Public Health, we have a rate of 55.3 cases per 100,000. That's an average daily incidence rate. Um, that is higher than the state and higher at, than Suffolk County and we're the second highest community after Lawrence. Um, we have a 4.03% positivity rate as of last week that we, we expect this to stay about the same for 
this week when the report comes out on Thursday. Um, that is very concerning. Um, overall in Massachusetts, as, as you had also uh, mentioned, um, President Boncori is that the seven day average of new confirmed cases is up by 800% uh, as compared to the end of July. Hospitalizations are up by 250%. They doubled in last five weeks alone. We really need to do everything we can to get our public in this town to, to really follow the orders, wear your mask whenever you leave your house. We need to stop making excuses. We can't get distracted by a day of low numbers like today with only three new cases, as I heard from Meredith. We really need to do everything we can. We can't stop blame. We, we have to stop blaming particular demographics or locations in town. The Board of Health has met with all of our clubs. We've talked to all of the leadership. Um, I think they're compliant. Um, we really need to step up as a community to support the effort to stop the spread. And um, we really need the town to help us with that to enforce at all levels. Um, that includes the police, that includes our agents. And we are not done at thanking Meredith for her incredible work. You know, this takes more than that. We cannot, we cannot put this on Meredith. She's on her, at her breaking point. If, if the cases continue to come in at this rate, we really, really, really need more help for our health department. And so I'm really, this is a, a very urgent appeal to the public to follow the orders. Thank you. Astrid, thank you very much. And, and I uh, have to agree that Meredith is like working uh, probably 80 to 90 hours a week. Uh, unfortunately, two of the students that were helping her have tested positive and they haven't been at work the past week, uh, the two BU students. So she's really uh, short-handed and she can use all the help we can possibly give her uh, because uh, she is tracking every one of these cases every day. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of work. Yes. Thank you, Astrid, for bringing that forward. Any, uh, anyone else? Public comment? I don't see any other hands up tonight. No one at this time? All right, do we have any correspondence, Denise? I haven't gotten any sent to me personally. So as of myself, I have not received any. Okay. All right, anyone else have any other correspondence they wanna bring forward? All right, let's move on to committee reports. Uh, all right. Uh, Go ahead, Barbara, do you have something? Yes, uh, I've been contacted by somebody. They didn't write, but they contacted me. Would it be appropriate to mention that? Um, okay. They, and they wanted to um, thank and applaud Joanne Amato for the super job she did on the election, that everything she, ran very smoothly, and she thinks we should applaud. Yes, she, she most certainly did. And uh, she was very shorthanded, and... Uh, her and her staff that were in there uh, with the help of some other people that work for the town that uh, Austin is assigned to help out uh, got through this election and it, it was a fantastic job done by Joanne and uh, we were able to have a, a count or a draft of what the election results were by 11 o'clock in Winthrop when there were some states that couldn't do it in a week and a half. So I, I applaud uh, Joanne and us clerk's office was doing a great job. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, anyone else have any correspondence? All right, let's move to committee reports. Finance committee. Vice President Lutheran. Okay, thank you. Um, finance committee meeting, finance committee met earlier this evening. Um, we had two items on the agenda. One, as we discussed a little earlier during the public hearing was the transfer of $25,000 for the dog park funding that is coming back with a unanimous positive recommendation. Uh, and we just discussed that. So there's really no need to go over that. The second item was the OPEB trust funding adoption. It's complicated in a lot of ways, but yet not that complicated in a lot of ways, but 
OPEB is a funding mechanism that we do for post-employment um, uh, retirement privileges or benefits, um, benefits liability, which is a very big number for all municipalities and looking for a different alternative as to how we, um, how we put those funds aside. So we discussed an option that was brought to us by the assistant town manager, Anna and CFO Anna Friedman, which gives us a little bit more flexibility um, in managing those funds. Um, this is a process, this first stage of this process will enable us to go forward. It will be a relatively lengthy, I don't wanna say a year, but this is going to take a few months to fully go through. But it basically transfers where we uh, are investing our OPEB money. Um, but part of this down the road, we will have to have a mechanism in place to fund this properly. Um, you know, again, many, many, many cities and towns in Massachusetts are totally underfunding their OPEP liability. Uh, we had been pretty good um, up to a few years back. And as the budgets get tighter, um, our contribution seems to wane a little bit. So we will have to look at in finance and with the help of Anna, look at different alternatives as to how we might be able to fund this uh, in a more consistent manner. Uh, but these are all discussions that we will have over the next couple of months. But this basically gets the ball moving to enable us to change the distribution as to how we invest these uh, OPEP monies. It did also come back with unanimous positive recommendation. Thank you, Councilor Terry. Any questions on the finance report? Hearing none, let's move over to the joint SBAC Millerfield. Uh, report. Thank you, Council President. Again, the, the joint subcommittees, the, the joint finance subcommittees of both the Miller Field and the SBAC uh, met uh, last Thursday, I think it was, or uh, Thursday and a half ago, October 29th. Um, we had 100% attendance there, and basically we were discussing the tennis court project, which is a joint project between those two committees. Um, we had originally, which we had discussed earlier, the School Building Association uh, Committee has um, put aside 750,000 to go towards mainly the tennis courts or the tennis courts. And the, the Miller Field Committee has put $400,000 aside to go towards parking improvements and safety improvements in regards to sidewalks um, around that area. When we initially went, so we, the budget is about 1.15 million. Uh, the construction budget of that amount is about 900,000. The, the budget, um, when we went out to bid, the money looked like with all the bells and whistles and everything we wanted to do it right is about 1.5 million. So now we are trying to uh, scope that back a little bit. Um, there was some, relatively easy, I mean, always painful, but relatively easy uh, cuts, which attributed to about a little over $300,000. We still have about 150 to $200,000 left uh, to try to cut back. But, um, you know, th there, are, there are some thoughts that we have as to how we're gonna do that. We're going to continue to meet. Uh, we do thank Conservation Committee for coming through and, uh, my understanding is given us positive recommendation on all the course of actions that we have uh, put into effect so far for this project. So we will be obviously coming back with more recommendations on this. Uh, this looks like it will be a project that will take about six to eight months. The timeline to hopefully start this project will be right around the beginning of the year. And with the goal being to get this operational by the beginning of school year next year, um, which would be 21-22 school year. Um, we do believe that, my understanding is, and I don't wanna speak for the, the school committee or the schools at all, but my understanding is um, assuming and hopefully so that we do have spring sports, along with sports, but we do have spring sports, which will um, have tennis. I, my understanding is that tennis for this fiscal year or for this school calendar year will be 
uh, done at Ingleside um, because we will hopefully be in the middle of doing that project. But it looks like, you know, there's going to be a few cuts here and there, but we are going to have a extremely good um, state-of-the-art tennis facility down there with, you know, good, safe parking and good, safe sidewalks around it. Okay. That is it. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, uh, on the Ordinance Review Committee, uh, Councilor Jerry, do you want to give us a report as to anything that's going on now? Um, sure. Um, on October 22nd, the Ordinance uh, Review Committee met via Zoom. Um, the committee debriefed its prior meeting where the Collins Center and KP Law joined uh, the meeting to present ways they could assist us throughout this process. Um, the committee discussed ways that the town administrative departments um, could be could be brought into the outreach process and for feedback, uh, along with town uh, government boards and committees, and also along with um, public outreach as well. Um, the committee discussed um, planning multiple public feedback forums, not just the one that is required by our current charter, but having um, multiple forums, especially um, given the current circumstances, we want to make it as easy as possible for people to participate. Um, there is no meeting date set at the moment for our next meeting, uh, but the committee will most likely reconvene. Uh, we lost you. Can. can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. No, we can. Okay, yep. Uh, no meeting date set at the moment for our next meeting, but most likely the committee will reconvene in the coming weeks. Okay, thank you. Anything to add to that, Councilor Holman? Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on, uh, there was a virtual meeting um, with uh, Castle Brothers on the uh, public safety building that is in the, hopefully in the works. And that was a joint meeting with uh, Public Safety Committee, Finance Committee, and uh, the Capital Assets Committee, all being involved in that. And Council Flockhart, would you start off on that, please? And any other uh, councilors okay. can add in. This committee, this joint committee, met to um, uh, review the uh, new public safety building which would house the Winthrop Police Department and the Winthrop Fire Department. Castle Brothers, Castle Booth Brothers Associates reported that they had done a feasibility study to evaluate 10 potential sites and explained how they had narrowed them down to two preferred sites off Veterans Road for which they presented very comprehensive uh, conceptual design. Those sites are the Little League field between Cross Street and Veterans Road and the golf course seventh hole off Veterans Road. They presented costs for each of the sites for a single phase construction option ranging in cost from $36,590,000 it's $36,590,000 to $44,170,000 and a two-phase construction option in which the fire department would be moved first, ranging in cost from $45,038,000 to $52,290,000. I rounded a bit here since dealing with all those digits orally is a little hard. Castle Booth estimated a start date in spring of 2022 and a second phase start date of spring 2026. None of the costs included costs to relocate the existing Little League field or to renovate the golf course. Approval of the town council to pick one of the sites and a public hearing are needed before the search for financial resources begins. A motion will be forthcoming at the meeting after next. Okay. That's it. Thank you, Barbara. Any other council? Council Farino, 
capital assets. We, you were on the meeting and Council Terry was on the meeting for finance. Uh, yes, uh, Council President and uh, 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 Council uh, Falcott did an excellent job in critiquing what happened at the meeting. There was uh, some participation and questions. Naturally, Chief Flanagan was there and uh, uh, representing um, uh, his, his committee. Uh, and uh, it was very uh, informal and uh, very informational. And uh, there are some questions. Uh, it's a lot of money. Um, that's pers my personal opinion, but it needs to be done. We need to, uh, uh, especially the fire department. I like the phased uh, concept, uh, but uh, uh, doing it in two phases is very costly. Uh, it's a lot more money than uh, it would be if it was all done at once. So these are a lot of things that we're going to have to consider. Uh, and uh, but other than that, uh, I, I appreciate uh, Council Flockhart for that support. Yeah, thank you, Councilor. Any other councilors that were present? One of Council Terry's Finance Committee Chair. Yes. Um, I, again, it was a tremendous presentation. Um, the conceptual designs were excellent. They you could tell that you know they really know what they're doing. Um, the sites, you know, I do have a preference, which I'm sure we'll discuss in, in a couple of meetings from now, but, um, you know, speaking from finance committee's purview, it's, I don't think you would find many people in this town at all that think that we do not need a public safety building. Um, the question as in life is usually, can we afford it? And is it the right time for it? So I think, um, I, I did say as finance committee that, I think it's imperative that we look at what the costs are. It's fantastic to look at the building and to just say right away, yes, I want that, I want it now. Um, but to just give people, because ultimately it's the town that has to decide this. And I think it's imperative that we give them all the best information we can. So we will be having council meetings over the next month um, to look at potential costs and um, how it would affect each individual homeowner. Um, and you know there were there were some things coming off the rolls over the next couple of years, uh, including the Fort Bank School and the and the coming school over the next five to seven years. So you know we have to take all that into account and look at what is best for our town and for our community. So um, I was very encouraged with the report. I was very impressed with the report. It was done extremely well. Thank you, and of, and of course this is just the very beginning of it. Our next problem will be to pick a site and the cost, and then appoint a committee, a citizens committee, uh, to do a feasibility study and to see if we can uh, move forward on it on a financial basis. Okay. Any other councilors have anything to say on the issue? Um, Demarco had your hand up. Yeah, ju just real quick. Um, and and I'm sure this will be covered over the next month. Say uh, the golf club site. Um, we only have a nine hole golf course. Was there any, would the golf course be salvageable if we took the seventh hole? That's my only question. That's uh, got to be decided. It, it doesn't look like it could be to me, but <laughs> that, that will be looked at. Okay. All right. Uh, while you're there, I understand you had a virtual town hall meeting as I council did. lodge. Yes. Yes. You want to yes, I did. What, sure, what sure. Feedback? Yeah, and I think I think actually Councilor Flockhart actually was on it for a little while too. Um, oh, it was a great meeting. We covered everything from debt exclusions to um, overrides to and and we were lucky enough to have uh, Lisa Howard on, who answered a ton of questions about uh, potential school reopenings. The only the only downside to that was it was actually. You know, the night before the new uh, executive orders came down from the governor, so it actually changed just about everything. But she she was great, and it was great to have her on, and uh, just always good to connect connect with the community. And I, I thought it was an excellent meeting. Okay, thank you. Town manager's report, Austin. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to actually have the fall forum at the next council meeting, um, so I'll try to keep my remarks here pretty short. Um, I really want to echo the comments of um, Astrid Wines um, and the Board of Health uh, concerning um, 
heeding some of the um, public health information that's been out there concerning COVID. Um, you know, I share her kind of a troubled demeanor about um, the numbers in town. Uh, we are lucky that we have been the Stop the Spread site for um, a few months now, and that has, oh, excuse me, uh, sorry if I'm being quieter. Um, we were uh, lucky that we're a Stop the Spread site, um, and that's something that came about um, only in August concerning um, our ability to have some testing in town that was free for the community. Uh, the Suffolk Down Super Site uh, also helped with our testing numbers. That said, um, we've had the clusters, we've had um, non-cluster related um, spread as well. Um, I, I just want to continue to caution people. Um, this was still the time where we could be outside and we could eat outside and we could do things, you know, not confined to our houses. This is going to get harder as this winter comes along, unfortunately. And um, although, uh, you know, myself and the stock market are, are excited about some of the developments with Pfizer, um, unfortunately, they're not even part of the president's Operation Warp Speed. Um, th there's some real time that will be in place until there's a vaccine. So these relatively simple things that we're asking for were echoed last week from the governor. The masks, the social distancing, please try not to congregate. I understand, I have family too. I want to see them. My wife uh, is upset with me because we haven't seen her family from out of state for uh, the better part of a year now. We are all going through this together. And I hope that people can continue to try to put the community first over their own interests. That is what really needs to be the priority because like Astrid said, it's not one group or another or one site or another. This is amongst the community. And as I stated in March and April, this is one of the demographically older communities in Metro Boston. We know how that is affected by COVID. I would hope that everyone involved in this could kind of connect the dots on that, that we put ourselves into a precarious position when we're entering the colder time of year with numbers like this. So again, um, and I'm gonna kick it over to Meredith, but I would just ask the community, we're in this place, we need to try as hard as possible to get out of this place. We need the compliance with the mass. We need the compliance with not congregating. There's only so much we can do as the government to keep people out of each other's houses and out of basements of other places in town or from socializing with one another. We can't stop that from happening. But that's where the community spread is happening, unfortunately. So we need, again, to stress personal responsibility. This is what the governor spoke about last week. This is what our medical professionals are telling us as well. There's only so much we can do in the town in terms of enforcement. We need higher levels of personal responsibility. Um, with that, um, I'll give it over to Meredith to give the group a quick update. Thank you. Meredith. Meredith, who is this? Oh, there you go. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, great. I'm gonna. Um, how are you doing? Are you I'm good. Yeah. Huh? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Don't mind the bags underneath my eyes. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna. I just threw together a few slides. I'm still compiling data. I have it kind of here with me. Um, in front of me so that if, if you guys have any additional questions, but um, I'm just gonna share my screen real quick. Okay, can you guys see that okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So just a few updates. Um, I'll try and get through pretty quickly. If it's gonna let me, okay. So as of today, our total confirmed cases are 666, 24 deceased, 93 isolated, um, 
and 549 recovered. Well, you will notice is that yesterday DPH upgraded their MAVEN system, which is the system that I use to, um, well, that DPH gives to us to upload case counts and things like that. Um, so they did a big data cleaning yesterday. So they actually took away, I think it was minus six cases um, that had been reported erroneously. Um, so that's why there's a bit of a discrepancy today, but I'd rather be discrepancied in that way versus additional cases. Um, so about, so it's been three weeks since we met. Oddly enough, that really is the beginning of when we saw things go significantly downhill. So since October 20th, we've had 228 cases reported. Um, that constitutes 34% of our total cases reported since March. 73 of those cases have been confirmed part of this um, multi-layer outbreak involving Pleasant Park Yacht Club and the Elks that then spread to, spread to the Win Winthrop Golf Club. Um, and 15, in the, past, in the past week, we've tracked 15 confirmed cases, either primary or secondary cases that have been linked to a separate outbreak involving um, some ha Halloween gatherings that happened at UNH. Um, as Council President Boncori and Town Manager Faison have mentioned, um, so this is our updated incidence rates. So our incidence rate is the highest it's been in a, by a significant amount. Um, we sit at 55.3% um, per 100,000 in the last 14 days. In the previous 14 days, we had 146 cases that, um, was, that were reported. Merrick, we lost your audio. Sorry, my Wi-Fi is struggling for some reason tonight. Um, so our present pause. Comcast throughout the town, at least there was last night. <laughs> so some people are going off and on. Uh, if it's a problem, you know, we'll pick it up. Okay, um, so our percent positive is what bumped us down to our to the yellow um, with our rates being with our percent positive rate being at 4.03. That's what um, what dropped us despite the fact that our case counts are at 55. Um, and um, tomorrow we are doing a flu clinic with CVS. They're the ones that are running it. It's just being done in conjunction. It's from 10 to 2 to We lost you again, Meredith. Austin, do you know the times of that clinic? All right, there we go. Sorry. Okay. Um, so tomorrow is another flu clinic. Um, it's from 10 to 2. It's not being held by my office. It's in partnership with CVS. They're handling all of it, which is great because um, we, I definitely don't have the capacity right now to host large scale flu clinics based on these case counts. So um, it's gonna be held on the Herman Street entrance circle to the, um, to the coming school, kind of right across the street from town hall um, from 10 to two. Um, and they will have about, they'll have 200 doses available um, tomorrow. The weather looks great. Um, we're hoping to plan flu clinics, additional flu clinics, um, through the later part of November. Um, but first, I wanna make sure that our case counts are kind of on the decrease. Um, also planning um, to do pediatric clinics with the public school system. Um, and with that, happy to answer any questions. Um, Meredith, just before um, I pick other questions, the flu clinic tomorrow, will they have the uh, high dose senior uh, shots or is it a reg just regular shots? They're gonna have 25 available. Um, and then I also believe that our shipment of high dose flu shots might be available in the next 10 days. 
also um, hope to have additional um, doses of the high dose as well. Thank you. Council DeMarco. Yeah, um, I, I got some easy ones here for you guys tonight. I don't know, I actually don't know if this is uh, a question for Meredith or Austin. So whoever wants to answer, um, shout, it, shout it out. Um, I've gotten some slight complaints about spelling errors on uh, when people go to get tested, like their name is spelled wrong and it takes them forever to get um, their results as a, because of that, as well as long lines at the testing, which I've seen myself. Um, have we given any thought, I know Fallon is an independent contractor through the state. Have we given any thought to maybe having their form posted online so people could fill it out before they get to the testing site thereby eliminating some errors and also shortening the line because people see a long line, they say, oh, I don't want to get tested. And and we want people to get tested, so we want people to get in line. So I, I'm just thinking, is there any creative ideas in that um, regard? So I, I can answer that for uh, yeah. Meredith, um, just in case our audio is a little funky stuff. Um, we, we've tried to explore that with um, Fallon, um, you know, that Suffolk Downs testing site, um, you fill out stuff and uh, get a QR code beforehand and you just drive up. So um, we are trying to work with Fallon concerning um, a better scheduling system. Um, mm -hmm. And um, if there are other um, hospital or health related entities that um, engage with us in test with testing in town, um, we're also going to be asking them um, to help us out with a little bit more robust of a scheduling system. Um, because personally, that's what that's what got me to do it on a more frequent basis versus the Suffolk down site was the um, doing it every Monday for a period of time and just setting up my schedule with it. So um, we, we're trying to explore that with them because uh, we do realize the numbers that are high. If you go back a couple slides in what Meredith was presenting, you see the number of tests that we've had mm -hmm. and those tests have only been readily available um, for people at Winthrop since August, essentially. So yeah. um, we've had a lot, a lot of people tested, um, but we need to kind of can keep doing that because yeah. that's one of the things we're dealing with right now um, that the governor brought up um, and even our region. Um, Boston is under capacity in their testing. Like they have more testing capacity. They just don't have enough people to take tests. Um, that's the that's what's happening in other places too. So um, I would encourage anyone, you don't have to get tested in Winthrop. It's great to get tested in Winthrop, but if you have the means and the ability to go to the Suffolk Downs Super Site, um, Revere or Chelsea, um, East Boston, there are locations where you can get tested for free um, if there is a line. So if there is an imperative need, um, there are locations. And uh, I would tell anyone, email into COVID-19 info um, at town. Um, town.winthrop.ma.us and we can uh, try to help you out. Last last question, this is a two second one, is are the UNH Halloween gathering uh, cases, are they tied to Winthrop? Like do they count as Winthrop cases or UNH or for example? The ones that I, the 15 that I um, was speaking about um, are direct residents here um, that went to visit UNH and came back. Okay. Thank Could you. you Thank you both. Screen, uh, please, Meredith. What's up? Could you unshare the screen so that I... Oh, sure. Sorry. If anybody else has their hands up, anyone else have any comments yet? Council <laughs> Terry. Hi, and again, thank you, Meredith, for all you do. Just a, a quick question on... So the positivity rate basically is the number of positive tests divided by the amount of tests taken, I, mm -hmm. I assume, over a week. If someone tests positive, mm -hmm. and then over the next 14 days, they go four times. After the first week, they're going every day to see if they're negative, negative, negative. Mm -hmm. um, I, I assume that doesn't count as a positive case if they keep retesting positive. But does that, how does that work with the positivity rate and everything else? That's a great question. So, um, so it... <laughs> I, I, there are people that have been getting tested frequently following a positive, um, despite the fact that it's not necessarily recommended because some people will test positive. It doesn't mean that they have to stay on isolation beyond um, their quarantine, like beyond the 10 days post um, diagnosis, as long as they're three days without symptoms. So um, 
if there, for example, if there's somebody like if Meredith Hurley tests positive and then she goes and gets tested again and I write down Meredith E. Hurley, that gets counted twice. So then when that comes into my office, I kick one of them back and note it as a duplicate, but that's too, too um, difficult for the percent positives. Um, does it make that much of a difference statistically how often that happens? Perhaps not, but I, it does, it definitely does factor into that, you know, and also for the people, um, you know, there are some people that get tested more than once a week um, and they continuously test negative. So that drives, drives up that denominator um, because from what I understand, the percent positive that they're calculating on the local level is not sensitive enough to say individual cases. On the state level, they're able to do that, but they don't do that for the 351 municipalities. They just look at how many people were tested over the course of that time with our zip code. And then that's what is the denominator. Um, so that's, I think I have some more considerations around that metric being slightly skewed. And just a quick follow-up, just, I mean, the last time we we had the meeting, we were looking at October 30th being the cutoff date. So just so everyone knows, the testing will be there through the end of the year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, when I got tested, they did ask me had I been tested previously. Uh, Council Flockhart, you have to speak into the microphone a little closer. We can't hear you. When I got tested, they asked me if I had been previously tested, which okay. I had, mm -hmm. because that was the second time. It was on the form that they were filling out. Yeah, I noticed that too. Um, I think that then they're just going to track it to your previous results, which is, um, which is great. However, that gets, so that's, I believe that that system is more towards the um, care, the transformative health care versus what gets uploaded to the MAVEN system. So that information is more useful to Fallon Healthcare and transformative health care that's doing the testing. Um, but I think that they just dump every test into the state system without designating it as multiple tests. Okay, thank you, Meredith. Just for information, I've been tested three times in Winthrop uh, over the course of the last three months, uh, twice and once each in the last two weeks, uh, just because of concerns of my family that I should get tested. So I, I've been tested. Uh, one time they got my name wrong and they put it down as Von Corey instead of Bon Corey. And it was a tough time getting that report. Uh, that report took about two days, two and a half days to get. Uh, when they had it with my right name, I got it within like 12 to 14 hours. But when it was in the wrong name, uh, it took almost two and a half days. But by the same token, they have uh, me down there now as two different people. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I think we should, uh, I, I'm sure if you see it. I don't know if you get the negative test, but. I do. I can search them. I can search the negatives, the positives. I've also gotten into a habit where at the end of the day, I'll run um, a backdoor report on transformative healthcare system so I can get a heads up before they get put into the DPH system to get ahead of potential outbreaks. When I see the test results. But I encourage people to please get tested. We need to know if you have it and you're asymptomatic, we need to know so we can stop these spreads in the family. The greatest majority of, of our cases, it seems, are family related. Is that correct, Meredith? Yeah, when you see, um, you know, even with the cluster outbreaks um, and the, the primary cases, um, it's when you see how quickly it spreads within a household and how quickly those track down, um, you know, that's that's definitely what we're seeing. I mean, we're seeing multi generations of within the same family testing positive very quickly once one person gets infected. 
Yeah, you know, if some families that have like 11 members in one family, you get it once it gets in one household. Uh, so if you're asymptomatic, still get tested so you don't bring it home and infect your entire family, please. Any other questions for Meredith? Meredith, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for the work you're doing. Thank I appreciate you. it. All right, uh, moving on in town manager's report, can we get uh, a report from Stephen as to what's going on with the center business project? How are you doing? Sorry about that. I'm just trying to get the computer turned on. Uh, so we're, um, quickly, CBD, we're still on schedule to uh, be fully com uh, complete for this calendar year by December 15th. Um, the uh, water main is fully installed. It will be fully installed after tonight's shift. There's um, a small section of uh, water main, 12 inch water main that will be installed in the French square area uh, tonight. And that'll wrap up all of the water main for the project. Uh, there will still so, uh, be some service connections that will need to be done. Um, but the water portion will be done uh, in the next week and a half to two weeks. Uh, sewer main is completely installed. Um, we are working on, uh, on drainage uh, on the section of Woodside Ave between French Square and Pleasant Street. Um, we uh, will have uh, remaining drainage work on Violet Road, Cottage Park Road, and Somerset Ave, uh, and a small portion over on, uh, going, uh, on Jefferson Street going towards Putnam uh, intersection. Um, I suspect uh, by December 15th, uh, we will still have uh, a couple of uh, months worth of drainage work to complete at the early part of next year. Uh, and then we'll get into the uh, street and sidewalk restoration. Um, that's essentially uh, the, the update on, on the CBD. I know it's been impactful. I know it's been inconvenient. I know it's, uh, you know, hasn't been easy on businesses and um, we continue to strive to, uh, to, to get it done as, as effectively, safely, and um, non-impactful, uh, but it is a, uh, it's a difficult area to work and it's, uh, it's, it's deep excavation. Um, but we will be through the utility work uh, again, uh, we'll be completely done for the season, December 15th, we'll be completely done with the utility work probably by uh, May of, uh, May of next year, uh, if we start in April, and then we'll wrap up uh, the calendar year next year with the street and sidewalk improvements and hope to be um, substantially complete by the end of the calendar year 2021. Thank you, Stephen. Anyone, uh, Austin, is your report complete? Yes, it is. All right, any questions of uh, town manager on his report? Any questions from any councils? President Boncori, I just wanted to give you a heads up that uh, uh, Councillor Farino has been kicked out of the meeting for some reason. So he's trying to log back in. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I, see a couple, I see a couple of people missing, but maybe I just can't see them. All right, uh, moving on to school department update. Uh, school, school committee met last night uh, it was quite a, a long meeting. There was a lot to be discussed. Uh, Superintendent Howard went over all the metrics, uh, the change that we, we've seen tonight, uh, part of the metrics that uh, Meredith put up as to how we changed from red to yellow and uh, what it means as far as the school department. Uh, being in the yellow for the first time now, of course, the school has to stay in the yellow for at least three weeks before they can move forward. And at the council, uh, at the school committee meeting last night, uh, she had put forward a proposal to have everybody back in school uh, by this uh, January 4th in a, a remote, not a remote, but a hybrid learning uh, situation where everybody would go in uh, for two days and two different cohorts. One cohort would go in on the Mondays and Tuesdays Wednesdays, uh, everybody would be remote, and Thursday, the cohorts that didn't go in on Monday and Tuesday would go in on Thursday and Friday. 
uh, when you were not in, you would be doing uh, asynchronous uh, learning rather than uh, having teacher uh, pupil relationship. Uh, I personally don't like um, the hybrid learning system as much as having them in all remote or all in class. But there's going to be um, some situations, even if we are in the yellow and we get down uh, low in the yellow, uh, we may have a problem with the feasibility of going to in-person learning. And, uh, you know, one of the uh, issues that we were talking about last night is even though the governor is pushing towards in-person learning, uh, not only do you have to be in the yellow for at least three weeks, you have to have the feasibility to be able to bring the students in. And uh, part of the problem is Right now, uh, we may not have the feasibility to bring students in. If we have to keep them uh, six feet apart, uh, there's no way you can get more than uh, 12 students in at a time. And if we can even get to three feet apart, uh, there still may not be the room to bring in a full classroom. So uh, we're working on that feasibility. Uh, the school department is asking and meeting with the uh, health department at their next meeting, and hopefully uh, we will be able to get people back into school in some form uh, January 4th or sooner. The committee actually voted to attempt to do it by December 7th if uh, the meeting with the Board of Health and uh, and uh, goes well and uh, the feasibility study goes well. They're going to attempt to get kids back in school on December 7th, but at least that was what was voted. Uh, even though the recommendation was to do January 4th. But that was uh, what happened at the school department last night at school committee uh, meeting last night. Uh, I, anybody any questions on that? All right, hearing none, we'll move on to old business. And I will call on <laughs> Councilor Vice President Letary to uh, tell us about the OPEB trust fund. All right, we have three motions, uh, two that we discussed, and one is a amendment from the motion from a prior meeting. <clears throat> I will read the text of the first one, which is the longest in terms of text. Uh, take my glasses off for this. And this is a motion on the OPED trust. Um, resolve that the town of Winthrop hereby accepts the provisions of chapter 32, section 20, of the Mass General Laws as amended by Chapter 218, Section 15 of the Acts of 2016 and established an other post-employment benefit liability trust fund or OPEB. Resolve that in accordance with the Act, the Town of Winthrop hereby designates the treasurer of the Town of Winthrop to serve as custodian of the OPEB fund. Resolved that the treasurer custodian be designated as the trustee of the OPEB fund with all the powers and responsibilities identified under the act and this vote. Resolved that the treasurer custodian as trustee be authorized to employ investment consultants as well as outside custodial service to maintain the monies in the fund and to pay for those services from the OPEB fund. Resolved that the Town of Winthrop hereby authorizes the investment of the OPED fund under the prudent investor rule established under General Law Chapter 203, Section C. Resolved that the Town of Winthrop authorizes the Treasurer Custodian as trustee to execute any and all documents necessary to utilize outside custodial services and or investment consultants, including but not limited to trust agreements, participation agreements, investment agreements, and administrative services agreements, and resolve that the Town of Winthrop hereby designate the Treasurer Custodian as the plan administrator, as may be necessary to utilize outside custodial service and authorize the Treasurer Custodian acting as plan administrator to take any other actions permitted by law or required by law. Ordered that the Town of Winthrop transfer to such other Post Employment Benefits Liabilities Trust Fund established in accordance with General Law Chapter 32B, Section 20. Any and all monies currently held for the purpose of paying retirement, health, and benefits for which the current balance is 
and 43 cents plus any additional interest occurred uh, to this balance up until the time of the transfer. That is the text of the motion came out with unanimous positive recommendation. You read it well. There was a motion on the floor that the town of Winthrop accept the provisions of chapter 32B section 20 of the Mass General Laws to establish this OPEB fund. Is there any discussion on that motion? If, uh, if not, uh, uh, Council President, okay. can we hear from CFO Anna Friedman, please? Yes, she has her hand up and that's who I'm calling on. Okay, uh, thank you, Council President. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Council Cherry. I just wanted to give folks some additional background on this uh, for those that may not be very familiar with um, uh, what this motion would accomplish. So the motion in front of the Town Council tonight uh, request the adoption of um, Mass General Laws, Chapter 32B, Sections 20 and 20A, which provide for the adoption of an OPEC trust fund under certain parameters that would allow for the investment of those funds under Mass General Law, Chapter 203C, which is the prudent investor rule. So some background on OPEB, what in the world is OPEB for those that don't uh, speak in acronyms all the time like I do? Um, so in addition to salaries, the town compensates employees in a variety of other forms. So um, many earn benefits over the years of service that they will not receive until after retirement. A pension is one such earned benefit. Another is a set of retirement insurance plans for health, dental, and life. And so this OPEB is specifically that we're talking about tonight um, are the benefits that folks receive upon retirement for health, dental, and life. So those are collectively referred to as other post-employment benefits, which are is, is the um, where the acronym OPEB comes from. Um, OPEB represent uh, OPEBs represent a significant liability for the town, any town, um, that must be properly measured, reported, and planned for financially. So for us to plan for the, our obligation there, uh, we need to accumulate resources uh, for future benefit payments in a really sort of disciplined, methodical manner during the active service life of employees. And then we have to be assessing strategies to mitigate our liability during that same time. So this motion in front of council tonight is um, is one of those strategies to address our unfunded liability. Our current unfunded liability is approximately $80 million. As uh, Councilor Terry noted um, in the reading of the motion, um, we, we set aside a, a bit over $300,000 at the stage to address that liability. Um, do you want to note that many towns are faced with similar large unfunded liabilities for OPEB, so this is not a, um, this is not a winter only problem. Um, the town had previously established an OPEB trust fund um, under um, the same statute. However, the statutes were revised a couple of years ago to allow for some additional flexibility, and this motion would provide for that. And I'm going to just quickly explain that in one second. Um, and so our, the treasurer collector would be the trustee of the OPEB trust fund. Um, they'll manage the trust fund in conformance with the town's investment policy and consistent with the state's prudent investor laws. And so just really quickly on prudent investor, prudent investor that basically means that the fiduciaries have to invest the trust assets as if they were his or her own and avoid excessively risky assets that could result in a steep drop in value. So it requires very responsible investment. Um, no, and investments should not be done in a risky manner. Um, so like I said, the law was amended in 2016 to allow for investing with um, an entity called the State Retiree Benefits Trust Fund, um, the SRBTF, uh, which oversees the administration and investment management of funds set aside by the Commonwealth and participating local government entities to address the liability associated with their retiree health care costs. There are around 80 political subdivisions of the state, so that cities and towns, housing authorities, certain types of uh, districts, quasi. So I believe the MWRA actually pursues this method to reduce their OPEB liability. Um, they're all, those folks are utilizing this mechanism as well. Um, so we would not sort of be the first to do this um, by any means. Um, so this motion is coming from my, my own uh, recommendation as part of a larger project initiated um, uh, per the town manager's guidance to me uh, to better formalize and elevate some of the town's financial policies, the specific action to invest um, to adopt this language to allow us to invest our OPEB funds in this way is to help reduce our unfunded liability and is recommended by the state to adopt um, this language and invest in the SRBTF. Uh, the treasurer collector and I had meetings last year with the SRBTF to learn more about investing, um, and we feel confident that it would be um, a sound financial choice for, uh, for the town to pursue this. Uh, right now, our funds are set aside um, in, a, in a, an account, in a, a money market account where it's not necessarily gaining 
um, as much as if we had it invested, where we'd be helping, we'd be getting a larger return on those funds to help reduce that liability. And so the town wouldn't have as much to come up with on its own over the length of time um, that we would be needing to fund, uh, to provide funding for this. Um, so that's, that was a lot, uh, but I hope that, that provides some clarification for what this is all about. Um, and I can answer any questions that you might have um, as part of your discussion. Thank you. I think there were no questions before. Does anybody have any questions now? Hearing none, all those please uh, signify by saying hi when your, your name is called on the roll call. Council Ruggiero? Yes. Council Flockhart? Yes. Council DeMarco? Yes. Council Christopher? Yes. Council Honan? Aye. Council Conti? Yes. Council Farino? Yes. Vice President Letieri? Yes. President Boncori? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. The next you, uh, motion is for $25,000 for a dog park. We'll read Thank that you, Council President. Yes, that the Town Council transfer $25,000 from the Capital Stabilization Fund for the dog park for the 20% funding contribution towards the Winthrop Foundation's awarding a grant of $100,000. So it would be 80% Winthrop Foundation, 20% Town of Winthrop, or take any other action relative there too. This did come out of finance with unanimous positive recommendation. Thank you. I want to thank the uh, Winthrop Foundation for awarding us that grant. Uh, is there any discussion on this motion? Is there any discussion on this motion? Hearing none, uh, the motion is to transfer 25,000 from capital stabilization uh, fund for the dog park. I just got one quick question. Sorry, Council Sorry. President. Did we get approval from the Conservation Commission on this? We, and Council President, we, we, we did. Terry said we did. No, I did not say that. I said we are going in that direction. They did have some questions. Uh, DPW director might be able to answer that more clearly. Steve? Yeah, okay. so we did that. Uh, Can I just ask a question? You said Conservation Committee did the other part of Millerfield and the uh, SBAC? The Millerfield Committee did, I mean, Conservation did come back on the tennis court project. But they are not 100 percent, I believe, on this project. And if Steve can add to that, okay. So, so we met with the Conservation Commission, and they're um, they were uh, on board with the project. To certainly um, support for the project, uh, what they asked us to do, which we did do, was go out and we staked the uh, the bounds of both the uh, the uh, maintenance shed and the dog park. They, um, we're going to do a walkthrough on that. We got confirmation that uh, they were scheduling a walkthrough uh, and that they would come back to us with any concerns. I haven't heard any concerns at this point. Um, so my guess is that they are writing the order of conditions uh, at this time. And as soon as we get those, um, uh, now that we have the, the, the funding in place, we can, we can, we'll be able to proceed to the, the bidding and, uh, and to get the project rolling. Any other questions on this? It's just a question, uh, Council President, to you. Uh, should we be doing this without the approval of the Conservation Commission yet? I know they, they, they approved the project, but they still haven't signed off on it. Yeah, I don't this... know if the project's not signed off on. Uh, Denise, uh, may be able to uh, yeah. speak to it a little bit more at this point. Yeah, we, we can all we can vote on this because no matter what, the order of conditions will overrule it. So they have to follow the order of conditions anyway. So our okay. vote won't really make a difference with that. All right, thank you. This is just to appropriate the money. It's not to actually uh, put a hole in the ground yet. They'd have to approve it first. When, 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 it, what's the time period? I'm sorry, President Boncori, what's the time period? Do we have any idea, Steve, how long it's going to take for us to hear from them? To hear from who, Councillor? Uh, conservation. Con so, conservation. So, we, we, we've heard from them. Uh, and, like, as I said, they just wanted to do a walkthrough and they were going to come back to us with any concerns. It's my understanding that the walkthrough occurred. We haven't mm -hmm. heard anything uh, negative come back to us. So, um, as far as construction, um, 
you know, we're hoping if weather cooperates to get some of the uh, uh, pilings uh, potentially installed uh, for the maintenance shed uh, before uh, snow falls. We're cutting it close at this point. I suspect the majority of the project to really take off in the spring and it's uh, probably a three to four month project. Okay. okay, thank you, Steve. This is for the dog park though, correct? This is, we already have the the, the funding in place uh, from the Miller Field Committee and uh, Council of Terry can correct me if I'm wrong uh, for the maintenance shed. So yes, this money is strictly for the dog park. This money is strictly for the dog park. We're trying to do the project con in conjunction with each other. It would save on cost. But yes, this money is strictly for the dog park. The uh, Miller Field has already financed the golf shed or will be financing the golf shed. Thanks. All right, and they're contiguous, so let's get it done at once. Please. Yes. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying yes to the $25,000 for the dog park. Council Ruggiero. Yes. Councilor Flockhart. Yes. Councilor DeMarco. Yes. Councilor Christopher? Yes. Councilor Honan? Yes. Councilor Conti? Yes. Councilor Farino? Yes. Vice President Letieri? Yes. President Boncori? Yes. Thank you. Motion passes. Okay. The next uh, important whole business is the uh, proceeds from the sale of the buses that were declared surplus uh, on October 6th. Uh, they came before the council. It came again before the council on the 20th after being going to the finance committee. Uh, there was a recommendation from the finance committee to uh, create a special article, take this money uh, from free cash. My understanding now that because free cash from the state has not been approved yet, that we have to uh, either revoke this or rescind it. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, we're we're Okay, Anna, if you want, to, we're going to make an amendment, make a separate motion, have the money come from another source until it's certified. But Anna, if you want to speak on it first. Sure, yep. Um, and so the council president is back here, and I apologize, this was, this was an error on my part live in the meeting to sort of um, address something that needs to be fixed in the motion. Um, and I forgot where we were in the fiscal year, uh, which is that our free cash is not certified yet. So we cannot um, move money um, from free cash um, uh, to set aside for this purpose. The goal of that original motion was to um, the money that has already come in um, without getting too wonky in terms of the way that the accounting has to work consistent with the guidelines from the state. We were trying to come up with a solution using free cash, which is not, which was an error. Um, the motion uh, that we are suggest, I'm su recommending to the council that the council please um, um, move um, to amend that motion that was adopted at the October 20th town council meeting and instead um, strike that language and in, and in place um, um, adopt a motion to transfer $21,275, uh, which is the value of the funds uh, provided from the sale of the buses. Um, from another source, we're able to um, de deposit the revenue into that other source and the council will now, um, if adopting this amendment, will transfer the money out of that source into a new special article where those funds can be properly segregated and set aside for the programming um, that is the goal, the intended goal of the council um, for those for which those funds are desired to be used. Um, and so I submitted some suggested language uh, for the council's um, uh, review uh, that would that would take that action. Okay. Council, so, do you have that suggested language? Yes, I do. And we're not, you know, we voted on this, we approved this. This is more language and source of funding. Uh, as to where the money was deposited, but I will read the motion. But before move, you read the motion, I think we have to rescind the other motion. I mean, we've already passed the other motion, so we'd have to have a motion to reconsider it, and anyone can make that motion to reconsider it because it was unanimous. It was unanimous. nine to one, so anyone that was voting in favor can make a motion to reconsider. So I think we have to do that first. That's fine. I'll make a, make a motion to reconsider. Motion to reconsider. Motion I'll and seconded Council Terry and Council Marco. Uh, any discussion on the reconsideration? Hearing none, all those in favor of reconsidering this motion that was passed on the 20th, please signify by saying yes when your name is called. Council Ruggiero? Yes. Council Flockhart? Yes. Council DeMarco? 
Yes. Councilor Christopher? Yes. Councilor Honan? Yes. Councilor Conti? Yes. Councilor Frino? Yes. Vice President Letieri? Yes. President Boncori? Yes. For some reason, the motion is rescinded. Okay, motion is rescinded. Now, do you have a new motion, Councilor Terry? I do, and I'm, I, I had a motion which I'm going to strike the first line since we already uh, rescinded that motion. So I have a motion that the town council transfer $21,275 from free cash. Um, no, not from well, no, I have a motion that the town transfer $21,275 from fund 853 sale of town property fund to a special article in the general fund to be titled fiscal year 21 bus sale supported programs or take any other action relative thereto. So it's the same, mo it, this, uh, this had come out of finance prior with positive recommendation. It's the same motion. It's just a different source of where the funds were deposited into. Um, so it's just basically dotting our I's and crossing our T's and doing it correctly. Um, and this is again, money from the sale of the buses, which are going back to support programs that Viking Pride uh, usually would fund. Okay. Now, most coming out of finance, is that correct? You had discussed this in your finance subcommittee? We did not, well, we briefly discussed this at the end of the finance committee. We had agreed on this at a prior committee. All right, then a motion's been made by Council Terry. Is there a second? Second. Motion seconded by Council Farino. Any further discussion on this motion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye when your name is called. Council Ruggiero? Yes. Council Flockhart? Yes. Council DeMarco? Yes. Council Christopher? Yes. Council Honan? Uh, yes. Council Laconte? Council Laconte? Yes. Council Frino? Yes. Vice President Letieri? Yes. President Boncori? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Again, unanimous. Uh, okay, under new business, I have a motion before me uh, moving that the town, Winthrop Town Council adopt the following order that the town appropriate the sum of $750,025 to pay cost of replacing lead water service lines, including all costs incidental and related there too. Motion to refer to finance. Second. I think Council President has um, been frozen up a little bit, but uh, okay. <laughs> I'll take I'll take a motion now because uh, I can't make the motion. I will take a motion make to that, make that uh, motion. motion by Councilor Farino, second by Councilor Christopher. Um, is there any discussion on this motion to refer to finance? Councilor Christopher, do you have a question or no? No, I'm sorry. no, I don't. No? Okay. Um, so everyone in favor of this, um, signify by saying aye when you hear your name called. Councilor Ruggiero. Yes. Councilor Flockhart. Aye. Councilor DeMarco. Yes. Councilor Christopher. Yes. Councilor Honan. Yes. Councilor Conti. Yes. Councilor Farino. Yes. Vice President Terry. Yes. President Boncori. Yes. I guess I got knocked off for a few minutes. <laughs> there you go. Welcome okay. back, Mr. Okay. President. Thank you. And uh, we sent that to finance. That's just what we had to do. Thank you, yep. uh, Vice oh. President. All right. Uh, public comment. We're now reopened for public comment. Is there any public comment? I don't see any hands up myself. I don't, oh, hold on. Yes. One. Yeah. We, have, we have a uh, couple. Color, uh, Wendy Page. Good evening, counselors. Hi, Wendy. Um, first, I wanted to thank um, Councilor DeMarco for his town hall that he had this week. It was fun and long, and it was actually really enjoyable. Got a, quite a few laughs right there, Denise. <laughs> and that's, uh, 
I'd encourage other counselors to do it. It's really an, an interesting time um, hearing from people that you don't normally hear from. Unlike me, where you guys always hear from me. Um, the situation we have currently with the T. Are we as a, a, a town, our town government looking at the ramifications of how that will affect our residents? Potentially our bus line is gonna be cut. Um, there's gonna be a bunch of issues happening with the T. Have we had any conversations about how we're gonna look at that? Yes, we have. <clears throat> Those um, were announced, what was that, uh, yesterday? Um, by uh, GM uh, Stephen Poftak. Um, our local service is one that could be reduced, but it's one that would is uh, up for the further exploration. Um, we're not like the, um, the Hingham and Hull ferries um, that were cut. Um, luckily our ferry does not get any subsidies from the MTA uh, in this situation. So those mm -hmm. were cut to be cut, um, but um, any reductions to public transportation in town, um, we will uh, be in touch with the Secretary of Transportation concerning um, and express the interests um, of the town and uh, what we need as much as possible. The, the dog park, um, I'm 100% behind getting this dog park finally going after the multiple years it's taken to get us to year. But whose department would be responsible for maintenance and whose department is the financial responsibility going to fall under with the dog park? Uh, we're going to have the maintenance out of our uh, public works department. Um, the dog park is, um, and Steve can correct me if I'm wrong on this, um, it's trying to be made as a as low of a maintenance type of park facility as possible. Um, Steve, can you talk, can you just give a quick yeah, no, absolutely no. Uh, you're you're correct in that we're going to try to make it as uh, as maintenance friendly as possible. Um, we are going to rely um, on on residents being responsible and 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 uh, cleaning up uh, after their dogs. We will provide um, necessary uh, bags and 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 there'll be barrels there which DPW will empty uh, daily. Um, as far as uh, you know, the, the the real maintenance day to day. Again, we're, we're going to uh, try to make it so that it's not a uh, a weed whacking, lawn mowing type of park. This will be uh, um, a very distinct border around the park uh, and uh, a P stone uh, in area. So, again, uh, we've never had a dog park in town. Um, I've done my best to learn uh, the upkeep of dog parks by looking at other communities. Um, but a successful dog park does have the buy-in of, of both town departments, but also the, the residents that use it. And, and we will be relying on that. And then the proposed to me tonight to, you know, broach to everybody else. Um, do we know if the, um, all of the jobs that were being looked for in the under the CARES Act for the folks who we were looking for um, ambassador, COVID ambassador community, COVID inspector. Is there still a need? Uh, you dropped out a little bit. The co so um, the COVID enforcement officer was that what yeah. you were asking about? Uh, yes, that, that position was hired. Okay. So we just have the one, right? For now, we just have the one. Um, we do have to utilize CARES Act money by the end of this calendar year. Um, there is, and that's state and federal, um, there was no extension of the CARES Act. Um, the HEROES Act is currently in the House, oh, well, I mean, the House voted on it, but it didn't uh, make any movement in the Senate. So uh, we are still uh, advocating for and seeking additional support from the federal government. Uh, um, once the calendar 21 starts, because Anna could explain this a lot better than I could, but we have done a fair amount of work with the federal money that we have gotten to date. Um, and it is um, a little scary that that money has to be utilized by the end of this calendar year. 
Excellent. Thank you all. Hi, Wendy. Um, okay. You're welcome, Wendy. Is there anyone else on? Yes, sir. We have uh, Leo Rodriguez. Hello? Hi, Leo. Oh, perfect. Hello. Um, I guess uh, a brief introduction since this is my first time talking. I'm a fairly new resident to Winthrop since last year. Uh, my name is Leo Rodriguez. Uh, me and my wife moved up uh, from Miami in 2015. Uh, currently work at uh, Hanscom Air Force Base, both of us, and we bought a house here in Winthrop March of 2019. Um, I'd like to thank uh, the town manager and Councillor DeMarco and Christopher for uh, responding to my emails uh, that I sent between yesterday and today. Um, but I'd like to bring it up here in the uh, meeting. Um, so since 2017, Winthrop, since 2017, with the inclusion of the water and sewage rates increase of May of 2017, Winthrop has seen a 40% increase in our rates. This makes us now the highest within all communities serviced by the MWRA. Also with a study that I saw from 2018, the increase would make us among the top 10 in Massachusetts in total rates for water and sewage. Um, these rates have actually increased faster than rental rates, house pricing index rates, and minimum wage rates in Massachusetts. COVID-19 is also a big issue with these rates, especially the one from this year, people experiencing unemployment from COVID-19 can see a big impact with this. From the latest statistics I saw, Massachusetts is still 10% higher in unemployment than what it was before the, the impact of COVID-19. There's also a big impact on low income residents that might live paycheck to paycheck and keep seeing increased rates. I understand that there's a needed a needed a need for the infrastructure upgrades since they've been sort of put behind in the past decades but i think the cost to the residents is also as important to see it's pretty much a cause and effect the more we try to repair our infrastructure to try to make up for the past the more the residents are going to see an increase in their rates to try to make up for the costs and debts it's important that we take a look at this and see what's necessary to do. I believe an audit is necessary because like that, we can see what we're doing well and what we need improvements on. We need to see exactly what the issue is and if we need to slow down on the infrastructure upgrades, that was, that's important because the more we do, the more in debt we go and the more the rates are gonna be needed to make up for that. So I urge everybody to, um, Please take a look at this issue and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Lou. Austin. I also have uh, Colleen Murphy. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, first, I want to um, just thank uh, Mr. DeMarco for his little town meeting the other night. It was very informative. Um, I also want to thank um, Mrs. Howard for her transparency in both Rob's meeting and absolutely last night in the school committee meeting. And if I could vote a citizen of the year, it would be um, Mrs. Her Hurley, if we have such a thing in the town. Um, I do have a question and I've wanted to call in the past. I asked Rob this the other night. Is there a reason why the street cleaning stops in October and doesn't continue into November to get all the debris off the streets before the snow to keep the sewers from getting clogged. I don't know if, it, if I can ask a question or I don't know. Steve, maybe you want to take it. Somebody have an answer to that? I can uh, shed some light on it. Uh, we do we we do continue to run the the, uh, the, the mains uh, on a pretty consistent basis. What happens is with the leaves, uh, it becomes uh, a, a situation where, uh, you know, if we run the full route, we'll never get through the full route. It just, it kind of clogs the machine. So uh, what, we, okay. what we do is we go around and we, we back out catch basins on our catch basin cleaning maintenance uh, to, to, you know, to take care of the, the catch basins specifically. Uh, 
we would never get through, uh, you know, once the, once we get full into the fall with the leaves, we would never get through a, a, a street sweeping uh, route, the street sweeping schedule. It just wouldn't be uh, not enough time in the day we would be empty. And so we do rely on the, um, the yard waste, uh, the, the, the transfer station for people to dispose of their leaves. And we do do two curbside leaf pickups, but the actual catch basin cleaning is done um, basically uh, catch basin to catch basin and not with the street sweeper. When are those pickups, please? I don't have the schedule in front of me, but there is one in November and one in December. Um, okay. I can get I your email if you want to email uh, me at S. I believe it's the 19th of November and the 9th of December, I believe. I believe you correct. I don't want to say the wrong date. Okay. I know it was on an email that I, I saw uh, the other day. All right. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. Um, it's not easy. You're not going to make everybody happy, but thank you all for your time and what you do. Thank you, Colleen. Is there anyone else? I don't see any other hands up for public comment. Really? No other comments? All right. Hands. We'll move on. Uh, Council Terry, for something to say? Yeah, just, a, and I don't know if you were gonna mention this or not, but we've had, we had two people that stepped down from the Citizens Finance Committee yes. and um, with Bob Wynn and Barbara Flavin, both have had incredible service to this town for over 25 years. I, I know they, I think it was 1992, yeah. they started on the Citizens Advisory Committee in the old form of government. And, and since the inception of our council form of government, they've been on citizens finance. Um, Barbara is, has, has been incredible and has done so much on the committee, uh, which I've been on finance committee since the inception also, and have had the pleasure of working with both of these uh, individuals. And Bob Wynn is just, uh, his leadership, his integrity, his professionalism is just second to none. Uh, we're a lucky town for having both of them, and, and I can't thank them enough for their service. And um, I, I know I've had several calls on people that are uh, you know, looking towards participating and getting involved, and, and I, I, I'm hoping that the council president will talk about a few of the openings we have on different boards and how people can become involved. Uh, but I, again, I thank Barbara and I thank Bob with all my heart for their service. I agree with you 100%. They are two great people who have served the community for many, many years. And I hate to see both Bob and Barbara leave. Uh, they're gonna be hard shoes to fill, but we do have openings now on the Citizens Finance Committee. We have openings on the Airport Hazards Committee. We're going to soon have an opening on the Board of Health. We have an opening on the Conservation Committee. So if anybody is interested in any of these committees, please go online, fill out an application. I'd like to get these done before the end of the year. Uh, I know that two of the uh, retirements are for December 31st. So I would like to have people in mind that will take over as soon as these retirements become official. Um, so please, uh, Get involved. They're, they're great committees. Any other committee you might be interested in, you know, fill out an application as well, because there's always something coming up. So uh, if you want to get involved, help the town out, fill out an application, please. Uh, under public relations, we also have uh, the fall forum, which is coming up at our next meeting. That will be done via Zoom because of uh, the new things that are going on with with COVID, we will stay in a, a Zoom meeting for that meeting. It will be the 24th at 7 p.m. It's my understanding that the Commission for Diversity, Inclusion and Community Relations, uh, which is a very important committee, will be meeting uh, on the 16th at 6 p.m. also via Zoom. Uh, does anyone have any other upcoming events that they'd like to talk about? Of course, uh, congratulations to the Marines uh, who are 245 years old today. Uh, I don't know if they 
That's uh, their anniversary. And of course, tomorrow is Veterans Day and there will be a small ceremony honoring the veterans at Town Hall at 11 uh, a.m. tomorrow morning. But because of the governor's um, orders, uh, we don't expect and hope uh, that we don't get more than 25 people. Unfortunately, it's gonna be a very small ceremony uh, because of COVID, but there will be a ceremony honoring Veterans Day tomorrow at 11 a.m. in the morning. Anyone have any other? Anyone have any others? All right, hearing none, I will entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. Motion by Councilor Terry to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Second. Second <laughs> by Councilor Perino. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye when your name is called. Ruggiero. Yes. Council Plotcat? Yes. Council DeMarco? Yes. Council Christopher? Yes. Council Honan? Yes. Councilor Conti? Yes. Council Frino? Yes. Vice President LaCherry? Yes. President Boncori? Yes. Thank you, Mayor everyone. Jones. Be safe, please. Be safe. Wear your mask in and out. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Good night.